So uh, this is the first in the series of videos where we're going to use Vericut software to write and simulate our programs to produce this particular part here. And for clarity in the video, what I've done is to produce drawings for each individual geometry. So firstly, the stock size is 100 millimeters square by 30 millimeters high. The stock is shown as the pink region here, so that's the top of the block and the outside. And the first uh, operation that we're going to do is to machine this blue area along here, which is basically just to go around the outside contour of the block. I'm going to approach this block where I'm going to bring my cutter with cutter compensation off to this region here, clear of the block and the, and the vise. Turn on the cutter compensation, go into X3, up to Y97, across to X97, back down to Y3. Bring the cutter probably to the zero position in Y, turn off my cutter compensation, go back clear of the job, and then pull back off in the Z axis. This is the very cut project that I've set up to machine this particular part. Um, and firstly, I suppose you can see that I'm using a Haas controller, and the machine that we're, we're using is a Haas Mini Mill. The G54 position, so I'm using the G54 work offset, and the G54 work offset is set right at the top corner of this block. So, um, and the block is 100 by 100 by 30 millimeters high. That's my stock size. My tool list. So these are the available tools that I have in the project. So tool number one is a 16 mil slot drill. Tool number five, for example, is an 8.5 mil drill, and so on. Just zoom up a little bit in here. So I'm opening my ViewNC program window on here, and I suppose what I'd like you to note is that the blue arrow here is actually showing the current line which has been processed by the control. Okay, my single step button will single step down through, so I'm reading the program number. I'm G54, G90, that means I'm using the G54 work offset. G90 means that all coordinates that we see on here are absolute coordinates from this point here, okay, from the G54 position you see here on the screen. Cancel cutter compensation, cancel a can cycle G80. On M06, so I've just done a tool change there and uh, put in tool number two. And if again, if you notice on here, the lugs here, you can see the sort of uh, lugs on the spindle, so the next line turn the spindle on, that's turned to a solid line representing that the spindle is rotating. I'm rapiding now to X minus 12, Y minus 12, and again, cutter compensation is off in this position, so the center of the tool, if you like, is at X minus 12, Y minus 12. The next line is G43, H02, which is to read the tool length compensation, and you must do this before you do a Z move, okay? Otherwise, you may crash the machine. Um, the H02 value is actually going to read the length um, for tool number two in the tool offsets uh, on the actual machine controller. Z10, this is going to be a rapid move because I haven't G00's modal, so I've rapid it down to Z10, and the next line you can see here, G01, Z-15, so I'm feeding down a linear move, feeding down to Z-15 at a feed rate of 100 millimeters per minute. I'm now turning on cutter compensation to the left, okay, and again, G41 is cutter compensation to the left. D02, read the radius value of tool number two stored in the tool offsets of the CNC machine. I'm going to go to X3, and again, what you might have noticed is nothing has moved. The machine actually hasn't moved. Um, so if I click again, you'll see I get a yellow uh, arrow showing that cutter compensation is applied. You can also see here on the status window here that cutter compensation is to the left. The controller has to read the next uh, line ahead because X3, if I'm going up this way and staying to the left hand side, X3 means that the cutter has to be to this side. But if I was going down in this direction, in the opposite direction, in other words, going to Y minus 97, the cutter would need to go to the far side of the line so that it's staying to the left-hand side of that line on the way down. So now we're going to go up to Y97. 
so now we're going to cross to x97 back down to y3 and again my cutter compensation just uh, in this case is still left on so I'm going back to x3 and with cutter compensation on I'm going to x minus 12 y minus 12 okay and then at g00 wrap it up to z10 so I just want to show you something on here so I'm just going to the xy view okay so hopefully you can see here um, what's actually happened is I'm leaving this sort of a radius one here and that's because I've gone from x3 which is this point here that's x value there is x3 back to x minus 12 y minus 12 but staying to the left hand side of that line so it's like as if I draw a line imaginary line from x3 y3 to here back in this direction but I'm the cutter has to stay on the left hand side of that line just to demonstrate that okay what I'm going to do is I'm going to close that window right click on here and edit it and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in a cancel cutter compensation so that's G40 before I go to this X minus 12 Y minus 12 so this is essentially is where I've started with cutter compensation off okay so we press save on there we can close that window down reset the model and in this case I'm just going to play okay so now you can see here this is a now a sharp corner so that's uh, it's kind of important that you kind of realize when you should turn on and turn off cutter compensation so turning off cutter compensation for this line what it results in is that in the previous line the edge of the cutter if you like the 12 o'clock position of the quadrant of the cutter has gone exactly to this particular point now often when we're machining we might want to just go a little bit past that to uh, ensure that we are getting a sharp corner on here so I might change that value there to x2 so that will pull the cutter a millimeter past here before turning off cutter compensation and moving back